Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss about the histology of pituitary gland. So, pituitary gland is also called the hypophysis and its weight is about 0.5 gram in the adults. It's divided into the two parts the adenohypophysis and the neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis is also called the anterior pituitary and the neurohypophysis is called the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary or the adenohypophysis is derived from the death keys pouch that is the derivative from the oral ectoderm. Whereas embryologically if we see the neurohypophysis it is derived from the neuroectoderm. And then adenohypophysis is divided by a fissure into three parts, the pars distalis, pars intermedia and the pars tuberalis. Whereas the neurohypophysis is divided into two major parts, the pars nervosa and the infundibulum. Now let's discuss the detailed histology of the adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary. It's basically divided into the three parts, pars distalis, pars intermedia and the pars tuberalis. First of all, let's see the pars distalis. It forms about 75% of the adenohypophysis. It is covered by the thin fibrous capsule and it has two major types of the cells, the chromophiles and the chromophores. Chromophiles are called chromophiles because they have the higher staining affinity and uh, this is because their secretory cells have the cytoplasmic granules in which the hormone is stored whereas the chromophores stain very weakly and uh, they have few or no secretory granules and they represent basically stem or the progenitor cells the chromophiles are further subdivided into two types acidophiles and the basophiles the acidophiles are of two types somatotrophs and the lactotrophs somatotrophs form about 50 percent of the uh, all the chromophiles and they, these are oval shaped cells and have central nucleus and they secrete growth hormone whereas lactotrophs are polygonal cells they have oval nuclei and form about 15 to 20 percent of the acidophiles or of the total cells in the pars distalis and they basically secrete the prolactin uh, now come to the second type of the chromophiles that is the basophiles Basophils are then divided into three types, the corticotrophs, gonadotrophs and the thyrotrophs. Corticotrophs release the hormone ACTH or the adrenocorticotropic hormone and the beta lipoprotein. This ACTH then acts on the adrenal cortex that is its target organ. Corticotrophs form about 15 to 20 percent of the total cells in the pars distalis and the gonadotrophs secrete FSH and LH. FSH is the follicle stimulating hormone and LH is the luteinizing hormone. These are secreted in both males and females but have the different functions in both uh, genders. Gonadotrophs form about 10 percent of the total cells in pars distalis and their target organs are gonads. Thyrotrophs release the thyroid stimulating hormone and they uh, these are the least abundant cells in the pars distalis and their target organ is thyroid gland. They form only 5% of the total cells in pars distalis and their cells are large and oval shaped. Now let's discuss about the pars intermedia. It is a narrow zone between the pars distalis and the pars nervosa. It contains two types of cells, corticophores and the chromophores. Corticophores in the pars intermedia are the specialized type of cells and they are because they express the POMC that is the pro opio melanocortin and produce two forms of MSH that is the melanin stimulating hormone that stimulates the melanocyte activity and also they produce the beta endorphins and the gamma LPH. The most specialized feature of the sparse intermedia is that small colloid filled cysts or the vesicles are present in the pars intermedia that basically represents the remnants of death keys pouch. Now let's come the last part of the anterior pituitary that is the pars tuberalis. It is also called the pars infundibularis and it basically represents the small funnel shaped region that surrounds the infundibulum in form of the collar. Uh, and it contains the groups and cords of the basophilic cuboidal cells and these cuboidal cells contains the lipid and glycogen granules. Most of these basophilic cells are gonadotrophs in nature. Neurohypophysis or the posterior pituitary consists of two parts, infundibulum and the parts nervosa. Infundibulum is also called the stalk of the pituitary. Its basic contents are hypothalamohypophysial tract, which contains the unmyelinated axons of supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus. And these axons are ensheathed by the astrocytes. And infundibulum also contains the blood capillaries of the hypothalamohypophysial portal system. Pars nervosa contains about 100,000 unmyelinated axons of large secretory neurons with their cell bodies that are located in the paraventricular and the supraoptic nuclei of the hypothalamus. 
These large secretory neurons have the axonal dilations at their ends which are called the herring bodies or the neurosecretory bodies. And the pituitaries are also present in between these unmyelinated axons in the pars nervosa as well as the fenestrated capillaries are also present. Now we already know that posterior pituitary secrete only two hormones that are the ADH and the oxytocin. ADH is also called the vasopressin and its basic function is to reabsorb the water from renal tubules. Uh, now let's discuss the pathway of the uh, formation and then secretion of these neurons. ADH and oxytocin are basically produced in the supraoptic and the paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus. And then they are transported axonally into the pars nervosa. Then they accumulate in the axonal dilations of the unmyelinated axons in pars nervosa and these axonal dilations are called the herring bodies or the neurosecretory bodies. These neurosecretory bodies contains membrane enclosed granules with ADH and the oxytocin bound to the 10 kilo dalton carrier proteins which are called the neurohypophysin 1 and neurohypophysin 2. One point to remember is that this hormone neurohypophysin complex is synthesized as a single protein and that is enclosed in the granules. And then this protein or this complex is cleaved to produce two things. One is the hormone and other is its binding protein. Then when the nerve impulses travel along the axons, they trigger the release of peptide from herring bodies. It means the peptide that is this neurohypophysin 1 and 2 will be cleaved and it will release the hormone and its binding protein. Then hormones will be taken up by this fenestrated capillaries of pars nervosa and will be distributed to the general circulation.